ordered pairs and Cartesian products. As mentioned many times previously, a set is just an unordered collection of distinct elements. So for example, A might be the set which consists of the distinct elements boy and cow. And so if we are told that the set B consists of the distinct elements cow and boy, then in fact the two sets A and B are identical. In any set, the order of the elements does not matter, so the set A is the same as the set B. Also, if we are given the set C, which consists of the elements cow, boy, cow, then in fact the two sets A and C are identical. In any set, repeated elements do not count. So in the set C, we could delete the first cow if we like. So C would actually be just the set which consists of the two distinct elements, boy and cow. And this is exactly the same as the set A. Hence, the set A is equal to the set C. We're now going to introduce another object to our world of mathematical objects, and this is the ordered pair. An ordered pair is going to be very similar to a set of two elements. Just like a set of two elements, an ordered pair is likewise a container consisting of two things. Let's consider an example. Suppose the ordered pair A consists of the two things boy and cow. Notice that the ordered pair A looks an awful lot like the set A from earlier on. Both of them are containers containing the items boy and cow. The only difference is that with the set A, we use a different set of mathematical punctuation marks to enclose the two objects. In the set A, we use curly braces to enclose the two objects boy and cow. And in contrast, for the ordered pair A, we use parentheses to enclose the two objects. Now, it is important to stress that the ordered pair A is most definitely not the same thing as the set A. We can think of the ordered pair A and the set A as being two entirely different types of containers. The first important difference between an ordered pair and a set is that in an ordered pair, the order of the things in the ordered pair does matter. So, to give an example, consider again the ordered pair A which consists of boy and cow, and the ordered pair B which consists of the things cow and boy. Then in contrast to the sets A and B that we saw earlier, the ordered pairs A and B are not the same thing. We treat them as being two distinct objects. The ordered pair A is not the same thing as the ordered pair B. Perhaps now you can see where the name ordered pairs comes from. If we put boy before cow, then we get the ordered pair A. But in contrast, if we put cow before boy, we get instead the ordered pair B, where the ordered pair B is not the same thing as the ordered pair A. So to repeat, the first important difference between an ordered pair and a set is that the order of the things in an ordered pair matters. The second and final important difference between an ordered pair and a set is that repeated things do count in an ordered pair. Let's look at an example. Suppose that as before, we have the ordered pair A, which consists of the things boy and cow. Now let's introduce another ordered object called C, which consists of three things, namely cow, boy, and cow. Now, recall that earlier when we had the sets A and C, where A consisted of boy and cow, and C consisted of cow, boy, and cow, we said that the sets A and C are in fact identical because in sets, repeated elements do not count. So in the case of C, we can delete the first appearance of cow, leaving just boy and cow, so that the set C is really the same thing as the set A. In contrast, the ordered pair A and the ordered object C are not the same thing. Indeed, the object C is not even an ordered pair. It is actually what we shall call an ordered triple. You can probably see now where these names come from. A consists of two objects, namely boy and cow, and hence A is called an ordered pair. In contrast, C consists of three objects, cow, boy and cow, and hence C is called an ordered triple. And so more generally, we are not just going to have ordered pairs and ordered triples, but we are also going to have ordered quadruples, ordered quintuples, and so on and so forth. And generalizing, we shall also have what are called ordered n tuples. But let's not worry about these for now. In this video, let's just focus on thinking about ordered pairs. In the case of sets, we call the objects in the set A elements of the set A. With ordered pairs, we can also call the objects boy and cow in the ordered pair A elements of the ordered pair A. However, we shall tend instead to call them by a different name. Since the order of the objects does matter in an ordered pair, we shall refer to them instead as the first coordinate of A and the second coordinate of A. So, to summarize, there are two important differences between an ordered pair and a set of two elements. The first is that in an ordered pair, the order of the objects does matter. So, the ordered pairs A and B are not the same thing. A and B both contain the same objects boy and cow, however, in a different order. Therefore, the ordered pair A is not the same thing as the ordered pair B. The second important difference is that in an ordered pair, repeated things do count. So, we are given the ordered pair A, boy and cow, and the ordered triple C, cow, boy, 
Roy Kao, the ordered pair A is not the same thing as the ordered triple C. Let's now switch gears and talk about Cartesian products. Given any two sets A and B, we say that the Cartesian product of A and B, denoted A times B, is the set consisting of all the ordered pairs X, Y, which satisfy the property that the first coordinate X of each such ordered pair is in A, and the second coordinate Y of each such ordered pair is in B. So for example, suppose the set A is the set which consists of boy and cow, and the set B is the set which consists of dog and egg. Then the Cartesian product of A and B is the set which consists of four ordered pairs, namely boy dog, boy egg, cow dog, and cow egg. Let's try another example. Suppose the set C consists of the elements boy, cow, and dog, and the set D consists of the single element egg. Then what is the Cartesian product of C and D? Well, the Cartesian product is a set which consists of three elements, namely the three ordered pairs boy, egg, cow, egg, and dog, egg. True or false question? Suppose we stick with the same set C and D, and we take the Cartesian product of C with D. Is this the same as the Cartesian product of D with C? <gasps> no! Well, it looks like Elizabeth Taylor disagrees. Let's see why this is the case. As already stated, the Cartesian product of C with D is the set consisting of three elements, namely the three ordered pairs boy egg, cow egg, and dog egg. The Cartesian product of D with C is also a set which consists of three ordered pairs. However, the order of the two items in each ordered pair is exactly reversed. So D cross C consists of egg boy, egg cow, and egg dog. These two sets are indeed different because, for example, the ordered pair egg boy is not the same thing as the ordered pair boy egg. In general, the Cartesian product of a set C with D is not going to be the same thing as the Cartesian product of the set D with C. This is in contrast to usual multiplication, where for example 2 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2. We can switch around the order of the numbers and the result will still be the same. We say that multiplication is commutative. In contrast, the Cartesian product operator is not commutative. It really does make a difference whether we are talking about C cross D or D cross C. These two sets are not the same thing. Here's another example. Suppose again that the set D consists of the single element A. Then what is the Cartesian product of the set D with the set of integers? This is just the set which consists of all the ordered pairs A, Y, which satisfy the property that every Y is an integer. Another way to write down this Cartesian product is to write it as the following set. It is a set which consists of the ordered pairs A0, A1, A2, and so on and so forth. Also contained in this Cartesian product are the ordered pairs egg negative 1, egg negative 2, egg negative 3, and so on and so forth. One more example. Suppose again that the set D consists of the single element egg. Then what is the Cartesian product of the set D with the set of all real numbers? Well again, this is just going to be the set of all ordered pairs egg y, which satisfy the property that every y is a real number. Note that with this Cartesian product, there's no way to explicitly list out all the elements, which we sort of did in the previous Cartesian product of D with Z. Here, we could sort of explicitly list out all the elements of D cross Z with the aid of the mathematical punctuation mark ellipsis. In contrast with the Cartesian product D cross R, it is impossible to pull off the same trick. It is impossible for us to explicitly list out all the elements even with the aid of the mathematical punctuation mark ellipsis. And this of course is simply because there is no logical way to list out all the elements in the set of real numbers. True or false question. Suppose we have any set A and we take the Cartesian product of A with the empty set. Then this Cartesian product is equal to the empty set. True or false? True. The reason is that the Cartesian product of A and the empty set is by definition the set consisting of all the ordered pairs x, y, which satisfy the property that x is in A and y is in the empty set. However, as we already know, there is no element in the empty set. Therefore, there is no ordered pair xy which satisfies the property to the right of the vertical bar. And hence, the Cartesian product of A with the empty set itself contains nothing whatsoever. In other words, A times the empty set is itself the empty set. Let us now introduce a small piece of notation. If we are given any set S, then the number of elements in S is denoted by vertical bar S vertical bar. This piece of notation here denotes the number of elements in S. So for example, if the set S consists of cat and dog, then we say that the number of elements in S is equal to 2. So, 
In general, if we're given any two sets A and B, we take their Cartesian product, then the number of elements in this Cartesian product is going to be equal to the number of elements in A multiplied by the number of elements in B. So for example, with our set A equals to boy and cow, and our set B equals to dog and egg, the set A consists of two elements, the set B consists of two elements also, so the set A times B will consist of four elements. And this is indeed the case, because A cross B consists of four ordered pairs. Similar Similarly, if we have the set C, boy, cow, dog, and the set D, egg, the set C consists of three elements, the set D consists of one element, so the Cartesian product of C and D will consist of three elements. And indeed, this is the case, because C cross D indeed consists of three ordered pairs. Let's now revisit our earlier claim that the Cartesian product of any set A with the empty set is itself the empty set. We can now prove this using a different method. Using our new fact that the number of elements in the Cartesian product of any set A with some other set, in this case the empty set, is equal to the number of elements in the first set multiplied by the number of elements in the second set. And in this case, the number of elements in the second set is precisely zero. Hence, the number of elements in A cross empty set must also be zero. And we know that there is only one set which contains zero elements. This set is precisely the empty set. In in the next video, we'll talk about how everything is a set. If you'd like to go instead to the start of this series of videos, you can click also on the link at the bottom right.